Uh, meanwhile, let's talk a little bit about Joe Biden. Joe's uh, going to be our president, rather, is going to be flying to uh, Normandy later today for the commemoration of the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Uh, what's interesting is apparently on Monday, uh, he behind closed doors at a fundraising event, he let uh, former President Donald Trump have it uh, for the. F you ever hear someone say something so stupid that you genuinely wonder how they put their pants on in the morning? How do you get up in the morning and put your pants on? Where do you put the pants on? I'll explain it to you someday. Well, if you answered no, then good for you. You clearly don't watch Fox News. You see, Fox doesn't have the best track record when it comes to news. Instead of go-go boots, the seductress green M&M will now wear sneakers. Green Eminem, you will notice, is no longer wearing sexy boots. Now she's wearing sensible sneakers. Why the change? Well, according to Eminem's quote, we all win when we see more women in leading roles. Because leading women do not wear sexy boots. Leading women wear frumpy shoes, the frumpier the better. That's the rule. Case in point, and as stupid as that comment was about Biden letting Trump have it by simply stating the fact that he is now a convicted felon, it was far from the stupidest thing they said in that segment, which we'll get into shortly. But first, here are Biden's full remarks from that fundraising event. Uh, for the first time ever, he referred to him as a convicted felon who essentially snapped uh, after he lost in 2020. Uh, some of the campaign remarks quoted include this. Folks, the campaign entered uncharted territory last week. For the first time in American history, a former president that is a convicted felon is now seeking the office of the presidency. This isn't the same Trump who got elected in 2016. He's worse. Oh my lord, he said what now? Well, I tell you what, remarks like that can only come from one entity, and that's the devil. Little girls are the devil. Yeah, Biden really let Trump have it at his own fundraiser behind closed doors while simply stating facts. Seriously though, Fox likes to paint the president as sleepy Joe Biden who can't finish a sentence and then at the same time make him out to be some sort of big old meanie dark Brandon that's bullying Trump, the poor little victim, who's also a very big, strong, brave boy. Like, come on, Fox, you can't have it both ways and still have it make any sense. But let's be honest, making sense isn't what Fox News is trying to do. They're trying to push a narrative, no matter how ridiculous it may seem. This was a sham rigged political show trial from the very beginning. This is the most outrageous travesty I've ever seen. This was not law. This was not criminal justice. This was politics. This was a political smear job. I guess we all need what, to shop at Banana Republic from now on? Because that's what it feels like. Yeah, a Banana Republic. After this trial, we need to shop at Old Navy because our country is a sinking ship. Yeah, even though we submitted evidence, had a grand jury and cross-examined the witnesses, the trial was still a sham. I mean, they wouldn't even let Trump's family on the jury. In fact, the trial was such a sham that the MAGA base was able to see through the lies of the Jedi. Don't look to me, Obi-Wan. I see through the lies of the Jedi. And they responded by reaching deep down into their hearts and their wallets to shill out a record-breaking amount of their own hard-earned dollars to support their persecuted martyr. Well, the numbers don't lie, and the verdict has energized the Trump supporters. Uh, he raised, in May alone, $141 million. More than a third came from online donations in 24 hours after the verdict. That's $53 million. And listen to this, 25% of the donors were first-time contributors. You know, I wasn't gonna support the guy financially, but after seeing he was a first-time convicted former president, I decided to do my part and be a first-time contributor. That's patriotism right there. But stupid is as stupid does, and Brian Kilmeade was quick to take the stupid to the next level. You no, know, it's also uh, risky, and believe it or not, I got this in the New York Times. I didn't realize this, but there's so many convicted felons out there, and it's, the number's like 70 million. Mm -hmm. And when you start ripping the president, you're a convicted felon, you're a convicted felon, are you, this is a question now, mm -hmm. are you alienating a lot of those people who say, this it's case doesn't me. make any yeah. sense, yeah. and this happened to me whether it was legitimate or not. Did he really just ask if calling Trump a convicted felon would alienate the vote of convicted felons? Well, folks, it looks like Brian Kilmeade wins the dumbass of the day award because in most cases, convicted felons can't vote. 
And there have been moves to restore voting rights to convicted felons, largely for nonviolent crimes after they've been on parole or served their time. And I'm all for that. But Republicans have historically opposed such reforms that disproportionately affect African Americans convicted of nonviolent crimes. Trump himself even called it crooked politics when they tried to do it back in 2016, which makes Lawrence Jones's next point here so much more disingenuous. But Bri, it's not just a question. These were supposed to be the Democrats' people. They said for years that they were advocates for the felons to be able to vote. Now, because it's Donald Trump, then, then we don't want felons to vote. They said that they don't want nonviolent offenders to be behind bars. Now, because it's Donald Trump, he should be jailed. They, they in, in an effort to get Donald Trump, they are flipping on every Everything. single That's issue that they that they believed at one point. Flipping on every single issue that they believed in at one point. Well, if that ain't the pot calling the kettle black. Donald is a bully. The man is utterly amoral. Oh. This man is a pathological liar, a narcissist at a level I don't think this country's ever seen. I'm proud to have worked hand in hand with President Trump. But <laughs> to admit their own political gamesmanship, their own attempts at weaponizing justice, their own relentless pursuit of opponents would be to allow a molecule of reality into the airtight distortion field that has been created to protect Magadonians from the harsh glare of actuality. Exactly. Magadonians, as John so eloquently puts it, have a distortion field around them and their perceptions of reality, right and wrong, and what constitutes the truth. And they will continue to spew nonsense and BS lies no matter what because the media landscape is not a court of law, but more like a reality TV court where nothing is real and what you say doesn't matter because it doesn't have consequences. That is, unless they are held accountable. But in court, Fox was forced to pay $787 million for false statements. Our political leaders are not in court. They are here on TV, where the news media has decided that there's really no such thing as reality. We now live in two utterly different universes. These two Americas are living in two different realities. Well, we're living in two different realities. Americans are living in two, for the most part, two very different realities right now. What is this? The Marvel Cinematic Universe, we are all living in one reality. And it used to be the job of the media to set the parameters for what constitutes that reality. And as we saw with Trump's convictions, what the courts do really well is look backward and reconstruct the reality of what actually happened. But what the media does now is wildly speculate on the potential outcomes of the future. If Donald Trump is the nominee and if he is convicted of a crime, could you support him? If he's a convicted felon, if he is the Republican nominee, does that mean you're still gonna vote for him? He could be convicted before November. Would you still support him then? Will you commit to certifying the 2024 election results no matter who wins? Let me look forward. Will you accept the election results of 2024 no matter what happens, Senator? No matter what, Senator. Voting irregularities, ant overlords, voting machines that suddenly transform into fighting robots, voting booth powers activate. Will you still certify? Who f***ing cares? And he's right. Nobody cares what Fox News hosts or even politicians say they will or won't do in the future because guess what? They lie. Trump said he'd testify and he didn't. Tucker said he wants to the green m and m and i can't confirm or deny that happened but frankly the machinations of how it would work don't seem too plausible so let's stop with the speculation and the if he's convicted will you won't you crap and get back to reporting the news asking about what the facts are of what happened and holding people accountable for their responses to those facts because until then we're stuck with stupid questions like this. This is a question now. Mm -hmm. Are you alienating a lot of those people who say, this it's case doesn't make any yeah. sense, yeah. and this happened to me whether it was legitimate or not? Thanks for watching, folks. Let me know all your thoughts in those comments down below. And for Really American, I'm Kenny Hess, and I'll see you all in the next one.